really my background or my training. My background is actually 20 years spent in nonprofit management. And I don't even really think of myself as a developer. I really think of myself as a problem solver. So our clients come to us with problems or with specific needs, and my team and I try to put together WordPress things to help them solve their problems, at least their online problems. So the question that we've been getting over the last couple of years repeatedly has been this one. Can we take registrations online? And they're asking for um, registration forms for events and for fundraisers and for children's camps. And sometimes those forms are fairly simple. Name, email, payment, boom, we're done. Others of them have grown to be quite complex and they're doing things like taking early and late payments. Some of these forms that we've created are over 100 fields long and three pages displayed on the website. And today, my talk is gonna be about some of the, I think, pretty geeky cool things that we've been able to do um, with our forms online. So if you ask my spouse or my friends, they will tell you that I am cheap, cheap, cheap. And I'm all about doing something free if there's a way to do it. And there may be some free ways to do some of the things that I'm going to talk today. But I'm also about being cost effective. And what we have discovered is that we're using some premium plugins. And so today I'm going to be talking about plugins that have paid levels to them. And primarily I'm going to be talking about Gravity Forms, which our friend here is so excited about, Gravity Forms. Um, I'm not here to sell you Gravity Forms today, however. I mean, I assume that a lot of the other form plugins that are out there, including some of the ones uh, that are, are represented by some of the sponsors here today, or people who are at this WordCamp, um, they can do some of these things too. But once you get into um, an ecosystem, um, you, you choose one path. It's like there are these paths, right? And when we, we choose one, and then you choose more of the helper plugins that go along with that, um, you kind of get more and more involvement. So that's what we do. We've chosen Gravity. Uh, it does some pretty cool things. Um, we also, and we're, some of the things that I'm going to describe today are not just um, the entry level uh, license for Gravity Forms, but they are only add ins that are only available with the development developer level license at Gravity. We're also going to talk about some other um, third-party plugins that are for Gravity. They're helper plugins for Gravity. And I don't, I don't have a sense for how um, many are developers in the room and how many are entry-level users. And so I'm, I, I'm trying to get a sense for pitching this, but I'm going to try and pitch it down the middle. And I hope that some of you who are more power users will still find some uh, cool tricks to do, um, as well as kind of helping entry levels get going. Uh, I'm going to um, try and put the, the logos up in the corner of the slide when I'm talking about a particular um, plugin, or uh, so that you can kind of get a sense for where we're going with those. So let's dive in. One of the very first things that our clients often ask us to do when we're putting together a registration form is to schedule the form. They want to open registration on a certain day and close it on a certain day and time. And you can certainly do that manually, but who wants to orient their life or you know, organize their life around opening and closing registration forms? So you can do that automatically through these forms. And not only can you um, put together the, the start date and the end date, you can put specific messages up. So we can say, registration is going to open on September 20, come back on that day. Or often our clients are saying, registration is closed for this event, call the office to see if there are spaces left. Like a lot of the form building uh, plugins, uh, Gravity Forms uses conditional logic. And it works like this. If I tick the little box that says enable conditional logic for that particular form field, it lets me hide or display that particular field based on an answer the user has given before. So if this is an address field and the question before it was, do you want to take a, a digital download of the product or can we mail it to you? And if the user selects digital download, then this field doesn't display at all. But if they display, uh, choose that they want a mailed product, then we pop down the uh, field to take their mailing address. And that's kind of the logic or the, the um, 
what we really want to do in terms of putting together these uh, forms for people, we want to really only show the form fields that are needed for the user in completing the form. It's less confusing and it makes for a much better user experience if we can only display the fields that are needed for that particular user. So if the, uh, the question on the form is, do you need childcare for this event? And they click no, they just keep moving on down the field or down the form. If they click yes, then we can pop up some other fields to take information about their child and their name and all of that kind of stuff, right? So that whole sense of um, keeping the form um, more organized and less distracting for the user is kind of one of the core principles. Now this is one reason why the forms might actually get to be very, very long. The, the form might be 100 fields long, but the user, a particular user, depending on the answers they've given to questions, may only see a fraction of those fields. <laughs> So we can do some pretty cool things with conditional logic. One of them is show and hide registration discounts by date. So this is a thing that our clients often want to do. They want to give an early discount for registrations or charge extra for people who are registering late. Gravity Forms doesn't do that out of the box. But David Smith, uh, who is a developer who works with Gravity, has a little side project called gravitywiz.com. And they have a lot of little helper add-on plugins for Gravity. Um, one of them is conditional logic with dates. So when you then install this little extra plugin, it allows you to do conditional logic with dates. So we can have then two pricing fields. One of them we display up until the time the early registration ends, and the other one we display after the early registration is over. We can do the same thing with conditional logic for different um, registration statuses or different registration types. So one of the things our clients often want to do is give a discount for specific types of registration. If they're a youth or they're, um, they get a discount if they're a member of the organization or something like that. So we can ask a question about what's your status? What registration status do you have? Are you a youth? and then only pop up the product field for the registration fee for that particular type of status. So when you're um, doing these conditional logics around the product fields in Gravity, only the ones that appear are the ones that go into the total and get processed for payment. So I might have you know, five different product fields with the different registration types, but only the ones that are showing based on the logic of, of their uh, type of registration is what's going to send be sent for payment. So when you're doing a lot of these conditional logic things, and, and by the way, um, if you notice like down at the bottom, that little plus sign, you can do more than one conditional logic statement. Right? So it can be that you're a youth that is only coming from this specific uh, type of uh, place. You can have all kinds of. And so the more of those conditional logic statements you begin to kind of build in together, the more testing you're going to have to do of the form. So here's a really kind of cool tip, and that is um, this is actually not a plug-in. You'll have to search through the Gravity Wiz thing, but there's a little snippet of PHP. And this is what, don't be afraid, that's not the whole uh, snippet, but um, you know that's what it'll look like, you just kind of cut and paste this code into your functions PHP file. And what that will do is allow you to add this query to the end of the URL where you have your form living. Now query, um, you know, query sounds like a question, so the question mark, and then GWN require, that's the name of the function, and one equals true in Boolean logic. So you're basically saying, yes, we're going to use this function on this page. And basically, it makes all of the required fields in your form not required. So if you've got a multi-page form and you're trying to go through and get to the see if the logic is working on the last field, um, you can just snap right through those pages without having to put everything into the condition, all of the required fields. And actually, if you um, tweak it a little bit, you can make, and this is only works for logged in administrators, uh, user level users on the site. Um, you can actually tweak the, uh, the snippet even further and just make it always true to have administrator users. So we have clients where we do a lot of registration forms for them. We just make it always true that administrators never have to fill out all the required fields. 
You can do scholarships and other discounts for your events by using coupon codes. You probably used a coupon code to order something before. Um, so it's pretty easy to do that. It allows the client, um, we can do multiple coupon codes so that they can track things uh, in terms of where discounts are coming from or, or needing to go to. Um, but one really cool tip is our, um, our clients are really wanting to funnel everyone into doing online registration, right? They, they often come, these organizations, with long histories of people doing paper forms and there are often some you know more Luddite members of the organizations that may or may not want to do things online or pay online or don't have credit cards or whatever their thing is and they, they balk about doing the online registration and payment part. Um, what we do is we set up for the client a coupon code called CHECK. So when somebody calls up the organization and says, I don't want to pay online, I don't know, whatever reason, um, the client says to them, go online, fill out the form, and put the coupon code CHECK in there. And then we know that that's how we're going to follow up. It allows them to submit the form. They get uh, don't have to pay anything, and uh, they can follow up and pay by CHECK. You can, of course, use coupons for a percentage off or for total dollar off. Sometimes our clients have a need to limit the number of registrations for a particular workshop or class. So this is another one from uh, Gravity Whiz. And if you tick the little box that says Enable Limits, then it uh, puts up, pops up these little, I should do some on this side too, equal opportunity. It pops up these little limit boxes and it allows you to kind of limit the number of people who can register for that particular class. Now. Um, so if there's only 15 spaces in the conference room where you're going to do the accreditations workshop, then uh, you know you can uh, make sure that no more than uh, you have no more registrants than that for that particular workshop. Um, you can also, if you tick the box right next to enable limits, it will show the number of available spaces left to the user on the front of the site. We can take signatures. This is an add-on at the developer level for Gravity Forms. It puts a cool little box in your form. And so if you're on a, uh, um, a computer, you can sign with your mouse or your finger if you have a touch screen or a tablet or you're on a phone. Um, it captures the signature as a JPEG file. And because at the same time Gravity is capturing the IP address of the user, it's considered a legally binding signature, at least for most of our clients um, in their particular um, state, um, for taking parent permission signatures. So we use this a lot because our clients are often registering youth for camps or for uh, special events. So we can take that and I'll talk a little bit more about what we do with those a little later. Of course, like a lot of forms, the submissions are held in the database. We are coaching and encouraging our clients to use the website as the hub for their registration management tools. In other words, this is where they're going to manage everything. And in fact, um, if they still offer an option to do paper registration, often we're trying to get them to have someone in the office or a volunteer typing in that information so that you can manage all of the um, registration information there in the database. Database. You can see, of course, not only all of this sort of more global data around the form, but you can see an individual entry, and we, we are coaching then the clients to edit those entries as needed, right? If somebody, a registrant calls up and says, hey, I want you to use my uh, work email instead of my home email, they can change that. Um, they can also make notes. So for instance, those clients that have paid by check, they can use the notes field for an individual entry to record information about that. Now, um, we use, we do a lot of managed hosting for our clients. And we very rarely give out administrator level uh, user accounts um, that, uh, because we don't want them to get in trouble clicking around in places where they shouldn't be messing around. Um, and that sounds kind of condescending, and, uh, but actually our clients deeply appreciate that we keep them out of trouble most of the time, and if they show interest and ask about it and push a little bit, we will give them an, an administrator account. But to allow them to be able to do things related to the registration fields, we use the free plugin User Role Editor, uh, that's it from the WordPress repository. And what you can do is open up a particular user level, like editor level users, and you can tick little boxes that give them these specific capabilities. Now, they've got the underscores because that's how it appears in all of the, the code, um, but it's pretty plain English. You can see, you know, the first one gives the, that user the capacity to delete 
delete entries or edit entry notes. So you can give the user those kinds of uh, capabilities related to gravity forms. Actually, at an even more granular level, we can give that to a specific user. So one of our largest clients has 35 users in their account, in their website, um, but only two of those are people who are needing to manage the registration pieces. And so we give these capabilities to those specific users, not more globally to a specific user role. Now, of course, you can export entries from Gravity Forms, and you can choose um, not just, um, you, you export them as a CSV file, it's an Excel readable file. Um, you can choose which fields you want to um, have exported. So sometimes when we're exporting for clients, we'll choose to omit a lot of the metadata sort of fields that uh, seem to confuse them or, wor or worry them somehow. Um, but not only can you export the entries you know, manually when you need to, there is this interesting plugin called Gravity Forms Automatic Export. And it's available at PressSquared.com and it allows you to set up an export just like you would set up an export in Gravity Forms, choosing which fields you want to export. But then you set up a recurrence schedule and you choose an email or multiple emails. And on the, the schedule that you set, it will generate an email that goes to those email addresses that has as an attachment a comma separated value fi file with the um, with the from that particular form. Now, most of our clients are taking uh, a specific registration form for a set period of time. So maybe maybe two or three months at the maximum that they would have a registration form live. So most of the time, if they're having us, uh, the registrar for that event is getting you know once a week or twice a week getting a, a, an export from us, they're getting an export of the whole form, all of the entries that are currently in that form. You can also set this um, particular export export, however, to only do the entries since the last time you exported. So if you have a form that's uh, sort of ongoing, um, you might want to just uh, get every week just the new people who have registered. We can do email notifications, and uh, we can, uh, in Gravity, of course, like a lot of these other uh, form plugins, do some really nice ones. Um, we can put in a logo for the client, um, but you can also put in um, fields that you're pulling from the form, and Gravity Forms calls, the other forms call it different things, but Gravity Forms calls these merge tags, and they are these little um, uh, curly brace um, tags, and so if I want to pull into the email the the first name that the, the registrant has given us, I would put in that little curly brace into the editor for the email notification. Now the email notifications are using just the regular post editor in WordPress, so you get a visual or you can do a, a text um, editor. But you don't have to remember all those little curly brace, uh, all those little merge tag pieces. There's a little drop down right next to the uh, editor that will uh, let you pick from among the fields in your uh, in your form. So you put your your cursor right where you want that merge tag to go, and then you just do the drop down and you say, I want to put that uh, the the total amount that this person paid. And so I just zip down to that field and click it, and boom, the merge tag magically appears. We can also set these email notifications to be conditional. So for instance, this is one of our clients, the Kansas Oklahoma Conference of the United Church of Christ. They're getting ready for their big annual meeting. And right before their meeting starts on a Friday afternoon, but that morning they do some professional development for their pastors. And that's a part of the registration form. The, the user has chosen, I'm going to, yes, I'm coming to that professional development. They call it boundary training. Um, yes, I'm coming to that, or no, I'm not, as the user is going through the form. So the people that chose yes on the registration form get a, an email uh, no, uh, confirmation that says thank you for registering for boundary training and the annual meeting. The people who said no just get one thanks for registering for the annual meeting. So you can set your emails to be conditional. We have set up uh, one form for a client with five conditional emails. We do have a lot of clients who are still working around some, uh, you know, they're not totally digital. And nonprofits are late adopters of technology. So, you know, they're not completely digital or digitized or have ways to do that. So they still have some paper that they're oriented around. We have some clients who um, really want to get PDFs to manage some of this data in terms of the registrations. There is a great free plugin in the repository called Gravity PDF. 
And when you, uh, you it, it's not a, uh, it, it's not easy sometimes to setting things up. You have to kind of uh, jump in and uh, use some of the tutorials because it requires setting up some templates in the PHP. But the base uh, template, the way it goes, you just put it in, put the code in, um, and it generates a PDF that looks just like the default admin notification in Gravity Forms. So you get a, uh, the default notification for the admin, and you see all of that in the email, and then you have a PDF file that's attached to that email. Now, the way these guys make their money is actually doing much more customized PDFs when you do that. You can um, create a PDF um, using PHP and uh, all of the HTML to create a, a PDF that looks pretty much just exactly like the paper form that you might also be taking. Um, this particular one, um, I know you can't read it, but um, we had a client who wanted to take day camp registrations for children. And they wanted their form to start out with taking the parent information and then taking the child information and then do you need to register an additional child? If so, we drop down another set of information to take more children. Do you need a third child? Up to three children. Take all of that. Take all of the information about emergency contacts and all of that. And is all of this the same for all your children? Yes, yes, yes. Then what they wanted us to do was out of that submission create three separate PDF files. They wanted us to rearrange the information so at the top of the file is the child's name and information, followed by parent information, and then followed on the back of this form with the language, the permission to treat. If you ever send a kid to camp, right, you know, there's that permission to treat in a medical emergency, all of that language, followed by the JPEG of the parent signature, which is then a valid permission form for them uh, to have on site. And they wanted to fill all of that out, but each child separately. So they've pulled all of this data from the various places in the form submission to display it much differently um, in the PDF and oh by the way put their logo up in the upper right hand corner. So it is pretty cool what you can do. You probably, if you're not familiar with uh, PHP, you probably need to find a friend or a developer who's uh, able to do that for you. We uh, have somebody on our team that helps us do that. And finally we can um, add in uh, contacts. You get people opting into your mail list. So I thought, you know, it's great to talk about all of these things that are, uh, you know, the cool things that you can do, but I also thought it might be super helpful to um, be able to sort of walk you through a, a case study. So um, one of our clients is the Northern California Nevada Conference of the United Church of Christ. They uh, did a, their annual meeting last spring. And so what I want to do is just sort of walk you through their registration form, which I hope will show you how some of these things play out, but also give you an idea of some of the kind of complex and sometimes even idiosyncratic things that these organizations will come to us to ask um, for us to do. Um, it, I'm aware it is a little bit confusing, so here's the big overview. They have five registrant categories, a category like young adult under 30, five. Four of those are receiving the same pricing discount, but all have to be tracked separately. The fifth category, which is the largest category by um, percentage, about 80%, 85% of the registrants, have to choose between being a commuter at the event, you know, staying in their own home overnight and then coming to the venue during the day, or uh, because this event is covering all of Northern California, many people have come from out of town, or a residential package where they're staying on site. The venue was Sonoma State University. Then the residential folks have to choose between double or single rooms and get three pricing tiers by date, early, regular, and late. This form was over 100 fields long. Don't worry, I'm not going to work you through all of them. But it turns out to be three pages in, in length. And over 300 people used this form. So let's dive in and see how we ended up putting it together. Um, of course, we can start out with your name and then your registration type. Now, they start out with youth not attending the youth program. If you chose that field, you got a pop-up right away that says, if you're intending to register for the youth program, that's a separate form and you need to go here to this other form. We have young adults under 30, member and discernment, that's their ministers in training, but you have to be on a list, special list to do that, and youth program chaperone. And then adult registrant over 30, that's the catch-all. Right? If you chose the chaperone, 
Um, then you've got an immediate pop-up in red font that says there is an authorization that's required for you to come to this event. You need to fill it out here before you arrive. Then the client needs to know, are you a voting delegate or a non-voting delegate? Because they need to print name tags in different colors for those two different additional types of registra registrants. If you are under 18, you got, uh, we want to know your parent, uh, gar and we have a notice that you have to have an adult on site who's responsible for you. And if that's not your parent, we need to know who that is. Then we ask, are you bringing a child under four? There was no charge for children under four. The client says, we just want to know who's here on site. Um, and so if they ask, if they said yes, then they got a pop-up that asked for the child's name and they could actually put in more than one child. Actually, the ulterior motive of the client in this particular field is to be very super clear with parents of young children that there is no child care program for them. The, child, the children's program starts at age five, but what they want to do is be aware there's no organized child care. That's the whole ulterior motive for a, a lot of that question. Then we get some uh, contact info. They want to take some demographics, like the gender and the place to your, the local church you're representing in this particular meeting, and that was the whole first field. Now, the second page of the form deals with all of the registration fees. If you were uh, one of the first three uh, registration types, then you are choosing um, a basically different links. So there's no time uh, uh, early, later, or uh, regular pricing for this field. You just get to choose based on the time, how many days, uh, nights, and meals you're going to be eating there. If you were a youth chaperone, however, notice that this field says if you want a commuter package, if you're going to stay at your own home and come in, you need to go back and just register as an adult. And they're doing that because there are a short, um, a limited number of commuter options given by the venue. This one is separate because they figure if you're signing up to be the adult chaperone, you need to be residential. You don't need to be commuter, right? No, for no commuter options. For setting that early and late um, and regular pricing fields, we first have to put a date field in. We automatically populate that date field with today's date, and then we hide that field from the user. So the user can't control that date. They don't, have, they don't ever see this field, but this is what controls which pricing field comes up for them. The first question we ask is, do you need a residential or commuter? If you answer residential, then you get a field that comes up, one of three product fields based on today's date, early, regular, or late. And then you choose between different lengths of packages, nights of stay, and whether you're a double or a single room. If you chose a double room, you get the option to get a, uh, be assigned a roommate or to tell us who your roommate, you already got a roommate, then we, know to, we need to know the name of the roommate. And then uh, Sonoma State has, uh, they're all rooms are kind of in shared apartments and you could request apartment meets. So you begin to see how some of the um, specifics of the conference begin to impact a lot of these floor uh, pieces in the form. The commuters get some uh, the same sort of lengths of uh, stay, but the the venue has severely limited the number of commuter packages. So we ended up using that um, uh, limit options. So we only can sign up so many. Um, I, I took this picture uh, after they had taken that out. Often at these sorts of events, like we did for this event, you sign up whether you're a carnivore or a vegetarian or a vegan, right? In this particular venue, they don't need to do that, but the client says, I do not want people calling me telling me they need vegan meals, because so they put up a little notice that says um, that's all taken care of. But they did have to ask for, are you planning to come to this particular dinner or that particular dinner because there are, they need to know how many tables to set up in the particular rooms. End of page two. The rest is pretty quick. Emergency contacts, photo release with a signature, donation to a scholarship fund, buying a t-shirt, scholarship code if you have one, and then the total. This particular client is using Stripe uh, and a, with an SSL on their own site. 
There are three different notifications that go out for this form, the regular admin notification. Note that in the subject line of the, ad, if you can see it, it's kind of tiny, I know. In the subject line for the admin notification, we've used merge tags so that the registrar for the event, when they get the admin notification, they have the registrant's name in the subject field. We get the confirmation to the, uh, to the user, but then also a separate um, reminder to the chaperones that they have to complete that additional authorization and the client is really, really hoping to make that super abundantly clear. Now, I know this has all been super, super detailed, and uh, but I, I hope that it gives you a sense of some of the kind of well, complexity that our clients are sometimes asking us to put together in registration forms. And I really hope that more broadly than that, this presentation gives you a sense of some of the cool things you can do with Gravity Forms or other forms in WordPress for clients. And I do hope that we have some time for questions, but I yep. really appreciate it. We have time for questions. Thank appreciate you. Appreciate it. Thank you. We've got about five minutes for questions. Perfect. Or actually, a little more than that. So, Perfect. do you have any questions about Gravity Forms or registration forms? How would you handle something like taking social security numbers? I wouldn't. Yeah. Um, take, he's, the, question, your the, the, the question is, how would you handle taking social security numbers? Yeah, I would be. Su I don't. Yeah, I would. I wouldn't do that. Um, I would be super careful with that. You would need a much higher level of encryption than most of our folks would have. But I mean, I, I suppose there are ways to do it. But I don't. I actually think it's an option on Gravity Forms. As a number of fields, you can drop down as a social security number and it grays it out. It's like a password field. So, Ooh, yeah. I don't know. It scares hey, me. That problem. scares me. Storage is a problem. Yeah, store, the storage yeah. would be a problem. Yeah. Other questions? Somebody else? Yeah. Would you use graphic forms as, as a CRM or would you recommend getting some other plugin that, that acts like a, a CRM? I mean, all the data storage. <laughs> yeah. I suppose you could use it as a sort of rudimentary CRM, but I, I think there are so many kind of other options that are out there, and the UKU people are here to do that. And there are some Gravity Forms integrations for those, so you can kind of like have a Gravity Form and then just send stuff over into like the UKU people are here. Where is, is Nate in here? I think he was in here earlier, but yeah, there's some guys here from them and yeah. Other questions? Anything gravity there were some related? Other hand. A lot of gravity stuff. There was a Has anybody used gravity forms before? Yeah. Yeah, like. Cool. cool. Well thanks, Beth. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you.